Hello, everyone. Um, how are your legs? Um, I wish I had a chair right now, um, but I do not have it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stand somewhere, and I think I'm going to stay there for my talk, and the poor cameraman can just point the camera at me and sticks with that. Hello, welcome to my talk. Um, the Blender conference is amazing. My last Blender conference was 15 years ago. And I can say that it grew a little bit, quite a lot, actually. Um, my talk, it says journey, which means it's very personal. It also means I haven't reached the destination yet. Uh, I don't think I will ever reach the destination, but you know what to say, it's about the journey. It also says one person pipeline, which means I don't have any friends. Yeah, it's not nice to laugh about that one, but okay. Um, right, so hello, I am Sasha Goedegebure. In the next 20 minutes, I will teach you how to pronounce my last name. No, just kidding. Um, I met my true love in 2004. And that was 10 years before I met my wife, and she just had to accept. I mean, I love Blender, and I think a lot of us people here share this, this passion for Blender. Um, I'm also writer, director for Big Buck Bunny. It's the first Blender movie they did in the Blender Institute. Um, I also attempted to do some other things like animation. Whew, very hard. Uh, small stuff. Um, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I enjoyed doing it for sure. I also have to say I was surrounded by some very skilled people. And one of them is sitting right here, Nathan. Um, Hi. <laughs> I, I want to say, I've never told this, but the people that I was sur surrounded with, there were just a few of them, but they defined for me what it means to be an artist who is capable of doing a lot of things, uh, who is able to wear different hats, do different parts of the production. And that was really impressive to me. And I think I was very spoiled because it's really hard to find similar uh, uh, in a later time. Currently, I am a showrunner at Omen Studios uh, since 2011 uh, in Singapore. Uh, some people here ask me, what is a showrunner? So I had to scratch my head, and I have to think about how to explain what a showrunner is. Imagine you are a director, but there's way too much to direct, too many episodes, too many shows, so you get other directors to direct for you. So as a showrunner, I creatively direct the directors, and at the same time, I am involved in the, uh, sc the story development, which sometimes we do not talk about these things here, let's say in the Blender conference, but I am hev heavily involved in that aspect too. Um, the last one, quite important for this talk. It's a bit of a spoiler. Um, it took me more than 15 years before I started using Python. Um, not just because it was very intimidating for me, it was also the idea that using Python is just, it's not possible for someone like me. And I, I strongly regret this. And I wish I realized earlier that Python is really for everyone if needed. So anyway, so a bit about the work that I do. So at Omens, I focus a lot on preschool series. The vast majority is educational, edutainment, which is very challenging in itself. Uh, we're talking about budget shows that need to be created really fast, and um, it requires a lot of people to work on. So this number, 700 episodes, means I have been involved in th these episodes one way or the other, as a scriptwriter, as a director, and currently just as a showrunner, basically. How is my sanity right now? <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> but it definitely weighs on you at some point. And it is extremely challenging. You think it's preschool, it's very straightforward and simple. No, it's actually really hard. Um, sometimes when we have time, we do short films at Omen Studios. 
And we have a longer time to focus on that. We do it a bit on the side so we can further develop our, our skills. Um, Soft Rain, our, the last short film I focused on was finalized in 2021. We started it very earlier. Um, it was a happy project for me because we did a Maya to Blender pipeline. Animation Maya, send everything to Blender, then all the lighting, shading, rendering, etc., is in Blender. So that was like happy news for me. I can also be part of the production, which I really, really enjoy. Now, it's about depression, perception of life, so story-wise, thematical-wise, it's a lot more serious, which is a little unusual for me because I never quite do kind of the serious stuff, right? Um, so anyway, yes, depression, um, serious thing, you know, also recently with COVID happening, I mean, it's definitely a serious topic that we should be talking about. Funny enough, suffering was made um, uh, released to the public only yesterday. It might have something to do with me being here. So I used this talk to push my boss to finally release this one. All right. Uh, please check it out. It's a very interesting project. Um, but anyway, in late 2019, as I was working on Soft Rain, I realized something really sad, and that is that this would have been my last project that I would be working on Blender, because I knew that the following years I would be extremely busy. I would be show running, and I would not be touching Blender, and this is not something that I wanted. So I've decided on a... Uh, is there some water, by the way? Oh, yes, sorry. Sorry, cameraman. I'm sorry, I just, just, just this one. This is very valuable time, but okay. Okay. As I was saying, I decided to do a personal project. And the personal project is that I myself can fully focus on Blender and I can be happy again. Uh, I call the project Pro Project Fuzzy. It's not official, but I'm just using it for now. Now, for Project Fuzzy, I had some primary objectives. The first one is the most obvious one. It's fun to work on. Problem is we sometimes lose sight of what we're doing. So I wrote it down. I made sure I always remind myself, this is like my prime directive. If it's not fun, I'm gonna stop doing it or I'm gonna change it. So this is really important for me. The other one that I wanted is I wanted to be fast to create like really fast, I don't have much time, do it in my free time, so it has to be super fast. And when I say fast to create, I'm referring to uh, when the tools are already there, the characters are already there. I'm referring to the, like the animated, the, the, the content, basically. The other one I said more for myself is that there's a potential for growth. By that, I mean something more than a hobby looking at maybe collaborations, maybe something on YouTube, um, anything basically, because at some point we get a little older, so you want to make sure your free time, you use it in a sort of a smart way. Here is a very quick, quick uh, sample, early sample. So animation wise, it's very simple. Don't look at the bad animation, look at the nice hair moving around, moving around. <laughs> Here's another one. First one was really easy. This one is much harder for me. But again, look at the hair, look at the hair, look at the hair, look at the simulation. <laughs> All right, these were some very quick samples. Now, breakdown for Project Fuzzy. What I wanted to do, I wanted to create short video content to start with. YouTube, anywhere else, maybe TikTok. Stylized characters. Stylized characters means simple characters. Simple characters means less controllers. Less controllers means easier to, an to animate, right? That, is at that was at least the plan. At the same time, simulated hair. Like, why simulated hair? Because you're adding complexity to it. Different reasons. Uh, the project still needs a, like, a unique selling point. So what makes this project interesting? And hair is not something that many people still touch, right? Because it is that complicated. At the same time, it's actually a fun challenge. It's actually quite interesting, but that could be a personal preference. And the last uh, reason is, is that in a way your simulation does half the work. 
you can have poor animation, poor-ish, and the simulation, if at least the simulation is proper, it basically carries kind of like the quality of your work. And that really helps, actually. Then the last one, really important too, a young target audience. Let's just say young target audience, slightly different standard. We are not talking about high quality stuff uh, like Pixar or like uh, the Blender Studio, right? And this was really important to me because I am familiar with that young audience and I can, can kind of understand that you don't have to make something super special. And I'm sure you have all seen the Blender Studios making offs, how like they tweak all their animation. And it's just, it's really a lot of work for a young target audience. It's okay, can let it go. What did it mean for Blender? Okay, Eevee, has to be Eevee. For sure, because I am not interested in render times that are 10 seconds or longer per frame, including the hair. So you know the hair, it has to be just a few seconds. Shitty laptop, doesn't matter. It just needs to come out really fast. The other thing that I wanted to do if, is have multiple shots in one file. Uh, not necessarily all the shots. You don't have to force it. But if you can have more shots in one file, I like the idea of pressing render going out for a nap, for a walk, to the toilet, et cetera, come back, and you're done, right? I like that idea. This is really that I believe I want to do. Then the other two, the last two, is about the tools. Tools to speed up your process. So I need tools to do the, the, the basic stuff, the mundane stuff, the boring stuff, but also the complicated stuff. Um, and at the same time, those tools would have to go to one location. And you're looking at something as efficient as possible, you need to find it in one spot. The thing with Blender is you can do a lot, but it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Actually, one thing in Blender might be in three different locations, but it's still not in the location where you want it to be. But it's fine because you, and this was my sort of my, my mission, call to action, use Python to unlock the full potential of Blender. And the thing is, I've never used Python, but I knew, I knew I had to do it if I wanted this. Here's one quick example. And this example is linking characters, linking the scripts of the characters, overriding the libraries, and at the same time loading the scripts. Now, the video finished before I finish talking. And you try to do this, let's assume you're not using the um, I forgot, it's the Acid Browser. Not sure if it's called like that. When I s is it the Acid Browser? Right, when I started this, there was no Acid Browser yet. Now, if you do it the conventional, going through all the menus, you're, I'm, I would still be doing it. So, and this is really important. All right, I wanna give a quick, um, like a very quick um, four, what happened in the last four years. So late 2019, I had the idea. In 2020, I started to focus on Python for the first time. The best way to learn Python is just write the tools that you want. And I didn't realize it is actually that simple. You don't have to follow any uh, Python classes or anything. Write the tools that you want, and that's how you learn Python. At the same time, very soon COVID started. It was really hard times for a lot of people. I took it as an opportunity. I turned COVID into coding. We had to be forced to be at home. Great. Finally, it is acceptable, uh, socially accepted to be at home constantly behind your computer. So <laughs> that helped me a lot. All right. I think I'll just hold this. Um, at the same time, I worked on my characters, and this is how my characters look like at some point. So at the same time, I continue to work on Python, write the tools that I want, write the panels that I want, anything that I needed that I thought I needed. When the characters were done, I started to do the pose and animation library, the facial expressions, poses, etc. because this, you want to talk about efficiency, you absolutely need that one, right? And it's th three years later, I was ready to animate. I completely hated it, so I changed it. In a few months, I made the decision to just change it completely. And this was really important, that at any time, make the change. If you have an objective like it has to be fun, 
can make that change. At the same time, continue to work on Python, improve the tools, improve the UI, etc. Then ChatGPT came. What kept you? It was three years too late. Not really. I used it. It helped. It actually, I learned a lot. Even though I was touching Python for three years, it actually helped me. And this is, you want to write your tools with Python, this is the best moment. ChatGPT, it might not be great, Bart, it isn't great, but there's so many options, and they can help you, and they can even teach you. And it is amazing how well it works when you want to learn this. So if you want to start, this is the time. I continue to work on Python. So what happens? And we're here on this day. And this one, this sounds silly, but this is the it's fun, I can do it model, made it up completely. Um, obviously, the Z axis is how much you like it. The X axis, the further it is on the X plus, the, the more skilled you are, basically, right? So why is it important that you look at your task? Why is it important that you kn if you know roughly where your tasks or the principles or whatever job that you need to do lies, then you know that if it is in the upper corner, you focus on it. If it's at the bottom, you should change it on that side. If it's on that side, you should avoid it. If it's on that side, you should just improve it. That's all. And that's really important. Now, this is me, late 2019. Now, interestingly, okay, a few things. Python was outside. Didn't touch it, cannot put it in, right? I don't know if it's fun or not, right? Okay, what else? There's a strong correlation between how much, how good you are at it and how much you like it. There are some also small exceptions to that. For example, layout, easier than animation, but it is equally tedious, at least for me. Rigging, I'm not a technical person, and this is really important, I wanna highlight this, because I'm using Python now, but I'm not technical at all. Rigging, however, there was, it's more rewarding, and that's why I enjoyed it more, even though I'm not good at it at all. And I think, look at yourself, what you're doing, and maybe whenever you start a project but you stop halfway, is it because you have reached something that doesn't give you that pleasure? So is there a way you can change it, manipulate it? So what happens? 2022. So when I basically had my first characters, I started the, um, the animation, the poses, etc. So what happened is two things. Python had a rough start, but I, it's fun. It's really fun. Actually, it was Tom Rosendahl who once said, coding is really fun. Have you ever tried coding? <laughs> and the thing is, I, I, I didn't get it for 15 years, and I wish that I listened. And it is really fun, and it is very rewarding, actually. What happened at the same time is that animation and layout, I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it. There's different reasons for that. So old system, old idea, three years, and then the new idea, which I basically changed to in just a matter of months. All right, first thing, um, controllers. Right? I had 50 to 55 controllers on the original, and the later it's like around 45 controllers. I think the old one is still good, because let's say Rigify, I think they have around 255 controllers, at least the ones that are meant for controlling. Right? So if you're not a fan of animation, what you do is you have to reduce that number. Right? Okay, another really, really big important, this is the reason why my joy for animation went down. The original had no squash and stretch. And I'm, I should know, it's a principle, of course it makes it more fun. But I was so involved in the technical side and the hair aspect that I forgot about the most important thing, that principle. So I got less hair, but I had squash and stretch, and it changed how much I enjoyed it. Now this fact, it doesn't change so much about how much I enjoyed it, but it definitely helps speed up the process. You're going to simulate all of this? You're gonna have all the cash then having like, you know, the other one, the new one, much easier. Okay, another thing. I mentioned that I try to do as many shots at the same time as possible. Now the problem is if you have a very rigid sort of pipeline where you say, I'm gonna do all the layout, 
that you reach a point that you're done with it. When you finally can start your animation, okay, finally I can do animation. You do your animation, all your shots. And that's what, that's what broke me too, because animation is hard. So what I did is, you know what, I'm still gonna put all the shots together, or as much as I can, but I'm gonna jump around. I have start with one layout shot. If I want to, I immediately animate it. Then I do the layout for a shot later. And it actually helps me to keep my momentum going, keeps me happy, etc. So very quick, pipeline itself. So because I am my own director, I do not have to storyboard. I do not have to do an animatic. What I do need is some form of planning. Now in my case, my planning are these really simple roughs or thumbnails. So what you want to do, you need to know the shots that you have, how many shots, roughly the screen direction, the main actions, and that's it. That's fine. That's good enough for me. It's not complicated stuff, basically. Again, it's for preschool. <laughs> then we have to lay out an animation. I mentioned I will not do animatic, which means that the layout is still important. Right? I still have to get the timing right, but I'm creating tools that I can fix that timing anywhere during the stage. Now, all the yellow stuff, semi-automated, just with a few buttons, a few adjustments, and everything is done. So it's much easier. So the biggest challenge for me is always the layout and animation. Right. In 2019, I had the idea of creating these tools, basically. I just showed you the linking the characters, basically. It's just a few buttons. All your characters there are loaded. And then I also imagined I want to create a floor, set up a floor that has shadow only, and the other one is basically hair, managing the hair simulation for linked characters. It's very tricky. This is what I ended up with, and it's still growing. Python is really fun. And it's not just fun, there is a, there's a beauty in it. It's that creation, it's really great. So what I've done is I split this up in three add-ons. The first one is general tools that help me, and the other two are specific to the project itself. They're specific to the characters, uh, they're specific to the hair simulation. Don't have to read all this, I'm gonna try to show a few. All right, this one is my scene builder. So, put a few cameras, as many as I want to. Uh, replace that default cube with a floor. I'm gonna turn to rendered. Uh, add a sky, add a sun, add a very subtle backlight, which works great with hair. And the last one, uh, optimized EV. It just does a, little a lot of little things everywhere. For example, ambient occlusion and whatnot. Now, some of these, they seem very basic, and they are. While at the same time, for example, the sun, it's just a sunlight, but with some little tweaks and fixes to serve my purpose. And you can basically create these very simple operators that you immediately get what you want. Now, because I do all these steps, I could potentially also put that under one button. And this is my most used button, <laughs> where I just do everything. And since it's one button, I can put it under quick favorites. Popping is so much fun. It's really so fun. <laughs> right, now, when I create a sky or a world, this is basically the nodes that it creates. I do not import this from another file. No, it's just the script itself that places this. And I was so intimidated, to how do I write this? And actually, these, this is super simple. Now, to control this, I do not go into that uh, node setup. What I do is basically I create a UI. I create custom properties that can control the properties in these nodes. So this is a very quick example where I can change, let's say, the gradients, radial to linear, change the colors, um, change the type of linear. Is it like a global linear or is it one that's stuck to the camera? All right, which is really nice, very fast, very easy. Now, then I also want to animate it. Because if I have one multiple shots, I want to change my sort of background over time. Then I realized, if you have custom properties, you can animate the custom properties, which you see basically right there, but they will not automatically update the properties in my world setup, which means it doesn't work. So I made it work. So I made it work that it, whenever I keyframe something, I put, it puts a button there. Now, 
it's not going to do anything. So here I'm just animating the different custom properties that control my, uh, my, no, by my world node tree, basically. Yeah, you don't see anything here. Once I press that little button, it changes. So what I can do is I just set it to uh, constant interpolation, and I can automatically change all my lighting for or my backgrounds for the different shots. Now, that blue button there that I press, basically what it is is a handler. A handler can run a specific code in a certain situation. In this case, it runs a code during frame change. So whenever you change your frame, it's going to look at basically your keyframes. And it works brilliant. Right, this one, camera control. Camera control is an example where I've just taken all the existing attributes, uh, properties, and I just put them together because I'm using a lot. Right, this is the one, this is actually called bind to bind the camera to a marker. It's, it's already there. I just put it basically elsewhere. Now, oddly enough, I call it key, which is incorrect because you're binding. You're not keyframing anything. You're just putting a marker and you're camera knows that it has to basically become active. So, but key feels more intuitive. It's my add-on, I can do what I want. <laughs> now, another one, and I learned from basically the previous one, the binding your camera to a marker, I want to do the same for motion blur. Can you animate motion blur like by default? You cannot, but yes you can, by using markers. So, I add a marker where it basically says there's no motion blur, I can somewhere somewhere else, then I will say motion blur should go on. I go somewhere else, I say there should not be any motion blur. And here there's motion blur again. Okay. Different reasons why would I want to do that? Motion blur adds time to it, obviously, right? To your renders. So I want to reduce that one by A being able to control go on, go off is really great can shave off another two seconds of the render, maybe. Um, I will show the results of that later. Um, let's see. Okay, this one is hair simulation. So what I've done is I put a lot of general settings together, and I put like very character-specific settings together, and I'm able to control it. The great thing about the hair cache system, if you just play once, it'll automatically cache it. So I'm using that method to basically cache it after a single play, and I shift it to, I move it to bake, basically. So everything's together, very quickly, I can do all this entire process. Now here is a quick example of how this looks like. No audio, no motion blur, motion blur. No motion blur, motion blur. And that's it for that one. So, okay, it seems that I am running slightly out of time already. So, unfortunately, I cannot talk about some of the other tools, which is, for example, um, animating collection visibility, which is very challenging. So, I'm just going to play it, and whoever wants to see it on YouTube. So, I've managed to kind of have a very easy pipeline for animating. Uh, the collection visibility. So I will not go into the details on that one. Now, and there are some other things that I've done. I'm actually using some very strange things. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip this one, and I'm going to show the last one that I have, which is, which is this one. So what I'm doing, I'm using my view layers as like a single, there is an option that you can, you can see it in the right side, use for rendering, right? What I'm doing, I'm rendering only one few layer per frame. So I can use that to create a tool that makes me actively change my few layers. And it's really weird, no crashes so far, <laughs> but it allows me to basically organize my files really quickly automatically set up uh, the nodes, basically, and that's about it. All right, what's next? Blender 4.0 is coming. It's going to break some scripts, and 
which means Grace can fix more stuff in Python, and it's really awesome. Um, I wish I had more time to show. If you want to, uh, if you want me to share some of this, please contact me. Just send me an email, and I would love to get back to you. Um, thank you very much. Thank you.